Greetings from Columbia, South Carolina, and welcome in to the Colonial Life Arena as the fifth-ranked Gamecocks of South Carolina play host to the Purdue University Boilermakers and their upstart squad that has five returning starters from a team a season ago that went into double overtime, eventually South Carolina getting the win. Hello, everybody. I am Birch Antley along with Khadija Sessions. Thanks for joining us here in Columbia. Khadija, five returning starters for this Purdue club. They are really good this year, especially inside. Uh, Purdue team, they're coming in really confident. You know, they took this South Carolina team to two overtimes last year. Um, they don't, they, they're relying on their um, guard, Carissa. Um, she's going, she had a big game last game against Kent State. She had 34, so we're going to see what she does here tonight. Meanwhile, for South Carolina, it has been Kiki Herbert Harrigan rising to the top, the senior from South Carolina. Seven consecutive games of 13 points or more, and she was big last year in the win over Purdue for South Carolina. 19 points, 15 rebounds for Kiki Herbert Harrigan a season ago. Taisha Harris also was big in that game, and she is 1,000 points in her career now. Taisha Harris does. For Purdue, though, let's also take a look at Odin. We're talking about Dominique Odin. She is out of Atlanta, Georgia, and she has been very, very powerful. The senior inside, averaging 11 points per game. Uh, she's been playing well this season. Uh, like you said, she's shooting 43% from three. She's averaging 11 points, but she's also a rebounding guard. They have to make sure they box her out today. Meanwhile, for South Carolina, how about the freshman, Aaliyah Boston? Every game that she has played this season, and that is every game that the Gamecocks have played, she has wound up with double-digit scoring. Uh, the bowler makers have to make sure they uh, limit her production, make sure they do use shot fakes against her. She's a really smart freshman. Um, she's playing like a vet. Um, so the bowler makers have to do a really good job with containing uh, Aaliyah Boston production today. What is so special about Aaliyah Boston in her production? Four games, less than 20 minutes played, and she still has double-digit scoring. There is head coach Dawn Staley, and it looks like her attire is fresh out of that trip from the U.S. Virgin Islands where South Carolina played so well in St. Thomas in front of a rowdy home crowd for Aaliyah Boston in that big win over Baylor. Uh, coach Staley, she's, she's normally the be, one of the you know best dressed uh, coaches in the, in the country and she's always interesting to see what she's going to have on right there. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I think I have a little bit of fashion sense. I think that's a Gucci sweatshirt right there. I think you may be right. Sharon Versip, 14 seasons at Purdue with 200 and 83 wins there. She has 400 career wins now. She picked that up in the win against Kent State, Purdue's last game out. Coach Versip was an outstanding point guard as a player, too, for Purdue. And it is going to be the Boilermakers in black winning the opening tip. And there is Carissa McLaughlin. You talked about her. Khadija, she is something special. When she gets hot from downtown, boy, watch out. And for South Carolina, in that game a season ago, they saw her go off for 34 points. Yeah, South Carolina has to do a really good job tonight here, making sure they could uh, contain her, um, limit her three-point production, and make sure they take her out the game and make someone else beat them tonight here. Ariana Harris with the miss, and the rebound goes to South Carolina, and Taisha Harris quickly firing and getting the shooter's touch there. And, you know, the Boilermakers have to make sure uh, they limit Ty's production on the offensive end. She does a really good job of running her team, picking her uh, shots. Um, that was a great pull-up and transition for Ty. That's her shot, though. That's like a layup to her. She was heavily recruited by Purdue and other schools in the Midwest. She is from Noblesville, Indiana, Taisha Harris. Chose South Carolina and Dawn Staley, and boy, South Carolina has been the beneficiaries of a good one getting Taisha Harris. Correct. That was a really great pull up by Dominique Odin uh, right there to match Ty Harris's. Scrum for the rebound. Bree Bill tangled up for South Carolina, and it will be Purdue basketball. Starters for South Carolina today, Zia, Zia Cook, Aaliyah Boston, Bree Bill, Kiki Herbert Harrigan, and Taisha Harris. Dawn Staley making no change to that starting five that has really gelled this season for the sixth-ranked South Carolina Gamecocks, 9-1 on the season. The only loss to ranked Indiana, and that was in that tournament at the US, in the U.S. Virgin Islands in St. Thomas over the holiday. Purdue 7-2, and, and they are going to start Carissa McLaughlin, Dominic Odin, Tamara Farquhar and Ariana Harris as well as Fantu Dion. It is Harris with the board for Purdue. Up top, Dominic Odin. 
Pass goes to Ryan. Taisha Harris picks it up. Skip pass by Taisha Harris into Beal. Beal muscling to the whole hoop, and she has the bucket for South Carolina as they will take the lead. That was a great composure um, transition play there um, by the freshman Bria Beal. She sees the defense. She steps straight through and make a really great play. Bill from Rock Island, Illinois, the 6'1 freshman, averaging almost seven points per game and at the free throw line where she is 56% on the season. Carolina with a three-point lead, Purdue basketball. Three-point try comes up a little short there for Odin. Gamecocks with the rebound. And that's one thing coach talk, the coach talked about. She wants to control the boards. She wants to control the tempo of the game and limit their turnovers because she knows how powerful South Carolina is in the transition. South Carolina, with a lead, one of the leaders in the country in rebounding, fourth in the nation in rebounds per game. Quick set offense here for Purdue. Harris with a defensive glass for South Carolina. And Ty Harris, pull up jumper, she nails it. Like I said again, Burst, that's almost like a layup for Ty Asia Harris. She, she comes down, she's pushing hard, and she pulls up in transition. I think um, they have to contain that at some point in time in this game. Five point South Carolina lead. Purdue trying to work it inside. That pass sails too far ahead of Farquhar. It's South Carolina basketball with a five-point advantage. 7-16 to play here in the first. South Carolina with six fast break points. Purdue, none. These two teams met in Lafayette last year. In December, game going into double overtime. South Carolina pulling away, hitting free throws at the end of the game there. Yes. Taisha Harris and Kiki Herbert Harrigan was really big for South Carolina in that win um, last year against the Boilermakers. Ty Harris had 14 points, seven assists in that game last season. There's Boston with the rebound. Harris, nice pass ahead and beautifully done by Cook, but unable to get it to fall down, and it's Purdue basketball. McLaughlin steps inside the three-point line and so nails it. Good she jumper. A, she does a great job of just settling, not rushing, um, finding her shots, and just settling her team down on offense. And averages 11 and a half points. Has not been shooting lights out from the floor early this season, 33% shooting from the floor for McLaughlin. But when she gets hot, she is deadly. 34 points against Kent State. I think that was tipped right there by Kiki Herbert Harrigan. It was indeed. Kiki Herbert Harrigan getting a piece of it. And Herbert Harrigan, 21 blocks on the season coming into this game. And Aaliyah Boston, she's got 31, so that's 52 blocks, Khadijah, just between those two players. Let's put that into perspective as Boston goes to the bench. As a team, Purdue, through nine games, they have 47 blocks total as a team. Boston and Harrigan, through 10 games, 52 blocks. That just shows, this goes to show you how, um, why they're number one uh, in shot blocking and that they do a really good job at timing up um, offensive players' uh, shots but they're not the only ones on the Gamecocks that are blocking shots because South Carolina as a team 89 swats so far this season Ricky Waltman number 35 the 6'3 freshman from St. Louis checking in for the Boilermakers South Carolina working it inside backing in Herbert Harrigan and it's taken away by Purdue turnover South Carolina and Ariana Harris is actually a really good shot blocker for the Boilermakers huh? she's leading um, she's the leading shot blocker in the women's history there uh, with three, over 300 shot blocks, and only she only has 35 more blocks to be the school's leading shot blocker. 
So that's pretty impressive on uh, Boilermaker's side. There's Kiki Herbert Harrigan with the lean back, and she just tosses the headband away and says enough of that. South Carolina three-point lead, 5-0-3 to play here in the first. Ty Harris strips it away. South Carolina comes up with the basketball. And a foul in transition. It's really good hands by Taisha Harris. It's timing it up, and knowing Odin is being really aggressive on the offensive end, knowing she has to always keep a hand up. So it's really great defense by Taisha Harris. We've got a stoppage here in Columbia with South Carolina leading by three, four, 52 to play here in the first. Stay with us. Thursday, we'll have a women's basketball matchup for you right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Number five, South Carolina hosting Duke in a great non-conference matchup here in Columbia, 7 Eastern, 6 Central. South Carolina with the early lead by three over Purdue. It's an SEC Big Ten matchup. Second consecutive season, these two teams have met. It went into double overtime a season ago in Lafayette when South Carolina pulled away in double overtime, courtesy of Bianca Jackson making some big free throw shots. And Alexis Jennings was big, rebounding and scoring points for Carolina. Alexis has since graduated. And then Kiki Herbert Harrigan with a big game as well. And Dawn Staley and her team came away with a big win on the road over Purdue a season ago. And Ty Harris was instrumental in that game as well. Dawn Staley in her 12th season as South Carolina's head coach, 282 wins. AP top 25, 137 consecutive weeks. Unbelievable. That's pretty impressive. I think, you know, Coach Staley, you know, she's a really great coach. Uh, she came into South Carolina with uh, big dreams, big hopes, and I think she's, you know, delivering to the state of South Carolina here um, with those numbers as you see there. And she is a fashionista as well. Meanwhile, on the Purdue bench, they're bringing a little South Carolina flair to the party. And there's associate head coach Beth Kucher. Played collegiately in due west South Carolina for Erskine College. She was an All-American there at Erskine, one of their all-time leading scorers, and then went on to become head coach at Converse College in Spartanburg and also at Presbyterian in Clinton, South Carolina, before going north and joining Coach Forsyth. At Purdue. It's a great drawn up play um, execution for South Carolina. Kiki Herbert here again with her second um, jump shot of the game. There's trailer number 23, Kayana. 11 points versus South Carolina last year in her freshman season. The sophomore averaging eight points per game this year. Also about four assists per game. I really like the energy, you know, the bullet makers are playing, uh, playing with on the offensive end. They're st still being aggressive, even though South Carolina is doing a really good job at hounding them on the defensive end. Um, they're doing a great job of staying with their flow. Purdue, up-tempo offense. They want to run with the Gamecocks here in Columbia. Keeping it close, and now South Carolina on the run as well. Nicely done, Zion Cook. Great take by the freshman. Um, great kick out by the, you know, your senior point guard, Ty Harris, and, you know, noticing that the game, um, Boilermakers were jogging back on defense and a quick score. South Carolina, eight fast break points. Boilermakers with four. Crashing into the South Carolina bench is Lindsey Wilby, number three from Powder Springs, Georgia, transfer from Texas Tech. She's played seven games, averaging about 12 minutes per game this year. Purdue's done a good job coming into the Georgia, South Carolina area, picking up some big-time players. Dominique Odin out of Atlanta, getting Bria Harmon from Atlanta as well. Lindsey Wilby from Powder Springs, even though she started out at Texas Tech. Almost out of the hands of Herbert Harrigan. 
Boilermakers. Oh, nicely done, it. Saxton to Henderson. Boilermakers, you know, making South Carolina go really deep into their offense. Um, you know, keeping them on offense, making them run long offensive sets. They're doing a really good job at staying with, sticking with their game plan right now. But they do have to do a better job with fouling. It's going to be Ricky Waltman, number 35, coming in right there, getting a piece of Destiny Henderson. Henderson, a 71% free throw shooter. Lee Lee Grissett checking into the ball game. Lee Lee, number 24 out of Durham, North Carolina, the junior. Almost four points per game this year. I think, she had, I think she's had a great transition from the post player to, to the guard for Coach Staley and um, Gamecocks. Brings a lot of defensive energy, lots of rebounding, gives you a big guard uh, presence. She brings a lot to this basketball team. Harris and Henderson harassing on defense there for South Carolina. Khadija, the progression of Destiny Henderson, did you think it would happen so quickly? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, seeing her from her freshman year to now, I definitely think she's grown a lot. Um, she's definitely capable of being a starter, uh, but she brings you that bang off the bench and that, that vet play. Um, she's very poised. You know what you're going to get out of Destiny Henderson every game. A really great defender, hounding um, the offensive uh, player for the other team, and she, she's very fast and aggressive. Um, right as you there. see there, uh, the defensive stop kicks it up for an easy two for Taisha Harris. There's that one-two ball game right there. How about that for Kiki Herbert Harrigan, just unselfish and giving it up there to Taisha Harris to get the points. I mean, that's a very unselfish play, but South Carolina's doing a great job in half-court defense. They're really hounding um, the Boilermakers, making them really guess on their shots, really getting their hands on every every ball. Um, they make they, And right now they're out-reading, out-rebounding, excuse me, Purdue on the defensive end. How much of that as a player, Khadija, you, you were a great defensive player in your own right, not only in high school at Myrtle Beach, but also at the University of South Carolina, all SEC player. How much of that is in film room and in scout, or how much of it is just greediness and just being a different level of a player as far as defense is concerned? I think it's a reflection of, you know, Coach Staley. She, she praises defense, and if you don't play defense, you're pretty much not going to be on the floor. So either you're going to be, you know, play defense or you're going to sit on the bench. So sometimes that, that fires you up to, you know, be a, a better aggressive defensive uh, player. If you didn't want to be, when there were some very difficult times in practice, right? <laughs> right. You, you, yeah, it's some you know some players come from high school just thinking it's all about scoring. Um, you don't have to really play too much of defense, but that's wrong. Once you get to college, you have to grit down and play defense and, and you know woman up and, and guard your player, limit their production. As a player, Khadija, were you more fond of being a defensive player as? Herbert Harrigan gets an easy bucket there. Um, I actually was. I actually took pride in, um, you know, hounding people's point guards and disrupting their offense. South Carolina out to the biggest lead. It's 10, 18 to 8. Under two minutes to play here in the first. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Lily Reset with the rebound. There you go. She can play that. Guard kind of combo forward position if she wants to. Correct. The last time down she was guarding the guard. That time she was guarding the center. So that's what she gives. She brings to this uh, South Carolina basketball team a very dynamic. Give them another dynamic on the floor. And there's a third um, jump shot there by Kiki Herbert Harrigan. Beautiful touch on that shot. What's that telling scouts? You have to you have to guard Kiki on that scout. You have to you have to get a hand up and uh, make sure she's not getting wide open looks. And that was a great um, three-pointer there by Carissa. Um, you got to make sure she don't get going. Asia Harris taking advantage there as Purdue not getting back on defense quick enough. Here comes McLaughlin. And nicely done, Dominique Oden. She is smooth when she hits her jumper. 11 points per game, just 38% from the floor. But if she gets hot just like McLaughlin, you've got to watch out because she can really light it up. Both teams right now playing with really quick pace, playing in transition. Uh, that's what South Carolina wants to do, um, play fast, just like the bowler maker. So this is going to be very inter interesting. Both right now, South Carolina, the difference is South Carolina's hitting jump shots. The bowler makers aren't. 
Destiny Henderson with the spinner there. South Carolina leading 24-13. It's time winding down here in the first. Under 15 seconds to play. McLaughlin holding on for Purdue, looking for the last shot. Henderson on the mark. McLaughlin pulls up. Herbert Harrigan with the rebound. Taisha Harris quickly ahead to Lily Grissett. Count it at the buzzer. South Carolina 26, Purdue 13. And the Gamecocks playing like a machine that is well oiled right now as we take a look at Ty Harris on the feed to Grissett. Gamecocks with a lead 26 13 here in Columbia. Saturday, we've got another men's hoop doubleheader for you right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Number 12, Auburn hosts Lehigh at Auburn Arena in our first game at 6 Eastern, 5 Central. Then we'll take you out to College Station for Oregon State and Texas A&M. Here in Columbia, South Carolina, the Purdue Boilermakers finding themselves getting outrun a little bit in the first. 26-13, South Carolina outpacing the Boilermakers, courtesy of the Gamecocks, 14 fast break points. Associate head coach Beth Kucher bringing some South Carolina hospitality to the Purdue program. She was an All-American for the Erskine Flying Fleets in Due West, South Carolina, one of their all-time leading scorers. And then she got into the coaching business where she was the head coach for the Converse Valkyries in Spartanburg. And then the Presbyterian Blue Hose in Clinton, South Carolina. Some of the best mascots in the business right there. The Flying Fleet, the Valkyries, and then the Blue Hose. <laughs> I think the Boilermakers have to take advantage of when Tyasha Harris is off the bench and make somebody else let this run this basketball team because Tyasha Harris is doing a really good job of running this basketball team right now. Zaya Cook, one on two, too hard off the glass, and the rebound falls down to Purdue. Grabbing it is Tamara Farquhar, the six foot junior out of Quebec, Canada. She played at Dawson College with. Roxanne Macolo, the 5'10 freshman number 12, also from Quebec for Purdue. South Carolina is also making the Boilermakers go deep into their offense and making them find different shooters other than Odin and Clarissa. Three seconds on the shot clock now, two. Three-pointer splashes out. Good rebound. Well done by Waltman. We're trying to keep it alive for Purdue, but it is South Carolina basketball with the lead, 26-13. Henderson sweeps it over. Lily Grissett. Wow, how about that? Lily Grissett. There's that athleticism. And that's where she grows. That's where she's grown at this year, uh, Bert. Just being able to take guards to the basket. She's a big, strong guard. Uh, right now, she's guarded by a post player. She's seen the advantage. She's seen that she was quicker and did what she was supposed to do. Put her head down and score. That's a great take by Lily Brissett. And this is where South Carolina is going to take advantage, I think, Khadija, of a lot of teams this season is their bench play. Dawn Staley has just put together a team from top to bottom that, you know, she can put five, any five out there, and they're going to get production. This year she's been pretty much going ten deep, and, you know, that's not, a, you know, you don't say that a lot about college teams, but this team right here, they, they give you a different dynamic every time someone different comes in the game, but the same thing, you get the same energy. The three, you know, they got different threats out on the floor, like Destiny Henderson right there with a great, Shot fake, one dribble between the legs, floater. That was a great take by Destiny Henderson. Um, they have a lot of weapons, whether they can go big, they can go small, you can get the press, you can go full court man to man. Don Staley has a really, really special team. Lily Reset with a kick out. Henderson with the teardrop in South Carolina, leading 31-13.
Wednesday, December 18th is signing day, and Gary and Gene will join ESPN National Recruiting Coordinator Craig Albert to provide wall-to-wall coverage of all 14 SEC schools so you can find out where the nation's top football recruits will land. The SEC Now Signing Day Special, noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, right here on the SEC Network and live on the ESPN app so you can watch anywhere. You can keep your eyes on the fax machine. Is now I think they still have to use that outdated technology to send in those LOIs. And there's that big banner, South Carolina's 2017 National Championship. First National Championship for South Carolina women's basketball. And Dawn Staley is hoping she has put together a team that started with recruiting, you know, getting the number one recruiting class in the nation last year. Is she going to see that come to fruition in the near future? That's a great question. We will see. 18 points, the biggest lead any opponent has ever had on Purdue so far this season. South Carolina has it. Gamecocks on a 20-3 run since 3.52 in the first. Defensive rebound for South Carolina. Zaya Cook weaving through traffic. Cook getting behind Amire, and then there's Boston. Too strong, and there's Cook spitting with the basketball for South Carolina. Now to Henderson to reset. 31-13 Gamecocks. I think the, you know, the Boilermakers have to do a better job with just controlling the tempo of the game. Right now, everything is going South Carolina's way. Everyone's coming off the bench, scoring, giving energy on the defensive end, and just getting layups in transition. So the Boilermakers really have to do a really good job. McLaughlin, first three-point attempt of the ball game, and she buries it, and that was a downtowner there. I think that was her second. Yeah, you're right. That was her yeah. second. Yep. Second line didn't have to do a uh, better job of making sure she doesn't get any more off. She was on a big cold spurt on her three-point shooting before the Kent State game last week, and boy, did she get her groove back when she hit six three-pointers against Kent State. Now two here today against South Carolina. Boston tips it away, and it's South Carolina basketball. Leticia Amma here. Zaya Cook. Taking one pretty hard there right in the, in the forehead as she was penetrating. And Bill comes back on. Lily Grissett goes off to a nice round of applause here from the fans at Colonial Life Arena. This crowd here, they know their basketball. And the crowd in Lafayette, they know theirs as well. Purdue. One of the leaders in the Big Ten as far as attendance goes. As Destiny Henderson sinks another silky jumper for South Carolina. 35-16 Gamecocks. McLaughlin. Thought she had that spot dialed in. Just a little strong there. And it's Henderson getting past Dominique Oden. Henderson dribble drive. Boston trying to keep it alive for Carolina. Russell McLaughlin is going to get a break. She'll head over to that puller maker bench. Zaya Cook, a little floater in the lane is good for Cook. Zaya Cook from Toledo, Ohio, the 5'9 freshman, averaging 9.5 points per game. Hammer here with a big rebound for South Carolina. It's a real drawn up play there by, you know, Coach Staley from an out of bounds standpoint for Zaya Cook. Boston spinning in the lane, changing hands, and Boston getting the bucket. Finally on the board. Her, her first, first points, point. yes. But that's what she, you know, she brings to South Carolina. She, her presence alone is going to, uh, you know, disrupt a lot of uh, other teams 
that's her first two points, but I'm sure she's probably going to end up with, you know, 10 points because she's so good uh, down low. You just saw Ariana Harris, a 6'1 senior, one of the best post players in the Big Ten and, and great player in the nation, having a little difficult time there trying to get around Boston. Um, you know, most people, you know, when they play Boston, they probably don't think she's as big and as strong and as physical um, as she is. But once you once you get down there and bang with her, it's a different it's a different feel. Um, it's it's kind of cool watching a freshman um, play a senior. There's Boston's first bucket. Look at how she was spinning there over Harris, changing hands in the paint, and then on the opposite end, she kind of had that feeling that Harris was going to try to get one back on her, and she disrupted Harris's shot. Two Wasn't shot. a block. But yeah, two, still, two shot blockers yeah. going head and head today. I think Dawn Staley, what she really loves the most about that young freshman is her maturity as far as her communication style. I've yet to see a freshman come in so quickly that will communicate so loudly in transition on defense the way the Boston will for South Carolina. Well, that's what, you know, having a conversation with Boston, that's what she says she brings, uh, you know, she brings differently than any other post player um, that came through South Carolina. It's her communication skills. She says she likes to communicate on both ends of the floor. And that's powerful, you know, being that I was a point guard and still am a uh, point guard. That's powerful hearing that your post player loves to communicate. That's, that's a big thing. Destiny Henderson almost slaps it away. 10 seconds on the shot clock for the Boilermakers. Now down to six. South, South Carolina, Carolina not perimeter making defense. anything easy on the perimeter. Not at all. Long distance three being dialed up. They will count that bucket? Nope. It's nope. Not, I don't think he's going to count that bucket. I think it was a foul on yep. Aaliyah Boston on the backside trying to box out. That will be her first. Dee's one of the best in the business. She calls it, it's usually going to be spot on. Gamecock crowd doesn't think so, and neither does Dawn Staley. But. I think Coach Staley thought that maybe the shot clock had expired before there was kind of Before it was foul, correct. Thirty-nine, eighteen, Gamecocks. South Carolina ranked as high as number five in one poll, six in another. Five seconds now. Four seconds on the shot clock. Look at this perimeter defense again, swarming all over the Boilermakers, just relentless. I mean, the South Carolina guards are really causing havoc um, on the perimeter for the Boilermakers. They're in them. They're touching every ball. They're trying to get every defection. They're getting through every down screen, um, ball screen, and they're making it really difficult uh, for their perimeter to score or get the ball inside to the post players. Boston. From the free throw line, unable to get the roll. Beal trying to keep it alive for the Gamecocks, slapped out of bounds. And did. I think it bounced off for 25 10. <laughs> Coach Sharon Versa, 14th season with the Boilermakers. 20th overall as a head coach. She has 400 career victories now. 283 of those in Lafayette. Victoria Saxton coming on now, and Boston getting a respite. Herbert Harrigan pulling the trigger. Did you see the athleticism from Victoria Saxton on that play? Yes. Having to go up high. Cook. She can be so fun to watch sometimes when she is weaving through traffic. She's just very, like a very sports crafty. car going through there. Yeah, she's a very crafty offensive player. 
Um, I think the whole country knows um, who she is and what she's capable of doing on the offensive end. Um, really great take right there by Zaya Cook. South Carolina, 22 points in the paint. Purdue just eight, and a lot of those points have been off the dribble penetration from South Carolina guards. Now Cook wants a three, comes up short, but she gets her miss. Sends it over to Ty Harris, and Harris will reset this South Carolina offense out to a big lead here over Purdue, 41-18. First trip back to Columbia for South Carolina in a while. They'll wave it off. That was a great, great block to end that defensive stop for the Boilermakers. Purdue, they have been pretty savvy at blocking shots this season. We talked about South Carolina's prowess at swatting the ball away especially with Herbert Harrigan and Aaliyah Boston. Then Ariana Harris, she is another leading top shot blocker in the country. She's got 24 this season, and she's on pace to be the Boilermakers' all-time leader in block shots. Yes, but all-time leader. She's already the all-time women's leader. She's going to be the all-time school leader, right. men's as well. All she has to do is get 35 more block shots, and I believe she already has two here tonight. Harris thought about the three, gives it up. Now Cook, double pump. Herbert Harrigan, big rebound. Fresh ball, Carolina. 2.17 to play here in the second. 41-18 lead, Gamecocks. Six seconds on the shot clock. Bill in the paint, draws the contact. It's a big part of Bree Bill's game right there. Uh, she's aggressive. She's a big guard. She's the, she's the quiet one out of the freshman class, but she's, she's definitely the X factor of that class here for Don Staley and the Gamecocks. Um, she's a very big presence. She causes defense a havoc on the perimeter. Um, once she puts her head down and goes to the basket, she's pretty successful with that. Free Bill, 56% free throw shooter coming into this game. She's hit her shots here today so far. Two of two, now three of three. Here's Roxanne McCallo, the 5'10 freshman out of Quebec. Three Canadians in this building. Two playing for Purdue and then one for South Carolina, and the one for South Carolina could be playing on their <laughs> Olympic team for Team Canada in these summer games. That's Leticia Mirhe, uh, who was absent for a South Carolina game. Look at Saxton and that Just athleticism there. Now Leticia Amahir, who was absent because she was playing with Team Canada in their qualifying earlier this season. There's Janelle Grant, redshirt junior transfer from the University of the Pacific, Stockton, California. I think that was a great decision for her. She seen that she had the smaller guard, Ty, Harris, Ty Asia Harris, on her, so she decided um, to take her to the basket and draw the foul. Great take. Ty Harris whistled for the foul her first. Janelle Grant native of London, England. This will be her seventh game of the season. She averages about eight minutes per contest. And she is four for four this season from the free throw line. 100% on the season. a minute and a half here in the second from the Colonial Life Arena in Columbia, South Carolina, returning here for the first time in a while. Great shot block there. Well, good feed over to McLaughlin. There's that spot. She's hit her third now from downtown. McLaughlin 
Boilermakers have to make more defensive plays like that and uh, quick um, shots like that. That's what they want. They want to find that particular shooter right there behind the arc. Carissa now in double figures scoring here with 11 points now, courtesy of those three-pointers. 45 seconds and McLaughlin inside the three-point line and this rebound for South Carolina, Ty Harris, and she's going to be fouled in the process. Oden getting in on the back of Ty Harris. So second. Dominique Oden out of Atlanta, the senior. 19 points, 10 rebounds against the Gamecocks in that double overtime loss a season ago. Good takeaway there for Purdue. McCallo, her eighth steal of the season in just nine games. Ty Harris has two fouls now. It's trailer that got the hand in there, actually, and then McCallo able to step in. 25 seconds. Remaining here until halftime, 43-23. Gamecocks with a 20-point advantage. Six seconds on the shot clock. It's a great, great Ariana move. Harris. Great, great move by Ariana Harris. Great patience. Ty Harris short on the three-point attempt at the buzzer, but South Carolina will take a large lead into the locker room here at halftime in Columbia. The Gamecocks out to a 43-25 lead. We go to the half here in Columbia. Don Staley will pack the house regardless of the age. South Carolina, one of the leaders as far as attendance goes in the country, averaging about 10,400 here at the Colonial Life Arena per game. And they come in all shapes and sizes, all age brackets. When you win basketball games and you do it the way South Carolina does, you will pack the house each and every time you're in this building. Correct. Purdue ended the half on a 7-0 run. Let's see if they can keep that mojo going to begin the second half here. As they will try to crawl back into this game. They have trailed the entire time. South Carolina led by as many as 25. Big rebound, South Carolina and Bree Bill. Bill, kick out, Harris, Harris waiting for her teammates. Great patience there by Ty Harris. It's a high low game there, Herbert Harrigan in Boston and Boston just will not be denied, the freshman who only had two points in the first half, quickly getting two points here in the second half. She's got four total. I'm sure Coach Staley went into the locker room and seen that, you know, her post player only had two points, maybe only had two or three shot attempts, and the first play was to get her the ball. Little stop and go there for Zion Cook, hangs and bangs. And Cook puts Carolina ahead now 45-27. Cook with eight points, three rebounds. And she is just definitely a, a, a penetrator. And Zaya Cook, when she is beating you off the dribble, she is something else. And McLaughlin, that's a two-pointer just inside the three-point line. It's, well, it is hard to defend a good shooter off the dribble, isn't it? it it's definitely extremely hard, especially with as quick release as she has. Herbert Harrigan, that jumper bangs out of there. It's McLaughlin 
coming down for Purdue. Oh, nice move in traffic there, and Odin, Dominique Odin, trusting her instincts. They're Odin gonna with need, eight points. They're going to need a lot more of that, a lot more of her being aggressive uh, and just attacking the rim. Dominique Odin, she has been a great player her entire career for the Boilermakers. I like the energy that the Boilermakers is coming out of halftime with on the defensive end. Um, really pressure in South Carolina. Um, Odom playing really well on both ends right now. Hopefully she can continue that and then they can cut some more into South Carolina's lead. This Purdue team picked to finish fifth in the Big Ten as far as the preseason polls go. I think they've got a good shot at maybe even finishing higher. This is a team that is returning five starters, well coached, and they're playing some good teams early, and that always makes you better. Odin collects her third foul. Now that could be troublesome for Very. Coach Versip and the Boilermakers. She's being very aggressive, trying to give her team energy, just a little bit too aggressive right there on that play, trying to stop Zaya Cook from uh, two easy points in transition. Trailer coming back on for Purdue, so Odin and her three fouls will go to the bench. Kayana Trailer out of Martinsville, Indiana, the sophomore has started a bunch of games this season. South Carolina with it, full court. Jump ball situation, and it favors Carolina. They knew it, and they took advantage of it. Right. Um, both of those freshmen are very, very good um, defenders for South Carolina. Cook shoots, scores. There's Zaya Cook. Crafty with the dribble, and she is nice in right there. The takeaway, Zaya Cook, and puts it down for South Carolina. They extend that lead back to 20. Um, she's coming out of halftime, being very aggressive on the offensive end, and she's doing it on the defensive end, too. Um, so South Carolina has a lot of weapons, and you don't know which weapon's going to come out. Here's Boston blocking out Ariana Harris. I mean, hello, meet me at the rim. Um, two shot blockers going head to head. I love to see it. A senior versus a freshman. Zaya Cook right there with a great steal in the press. Zaya Cook, one of the top freshmen in the country. And then Boston on the other end, South Carolina with four block shots. Now Purdue with five. Oh, and there's Bree Bill, and we're even five apiece now. Harris. Uh, Forgot about McLaughlin. You can't you leave can't, her alone. Yeah, you cannot leave her in transition at any point in time on that three-point line by herself because she's gone, she's capable of knocking down six and seven threes per game. 16 points for McLaughlin now. Leads all scorers in this game. South Carolina, Zaya Cook with 12. Here's Boston inside. It's a great zip pass by Zaya Cook there to get Aaliyah Boston. And she um, got that two. on Ariana Harris. And so this freshman senior, senior battle. battle right now is <laughs> shaping up to be fun to watch, isn't it? Great to watch. Oh, look at South Carolina battle. Cook keeps it alive. Zaya Cook, how about that pass? And Ty Harris is there. Great pass by wow. the freshman to the senior for the M1 layup. Great chemistry right there on the perimeter. Great, great pass by Zaya Cook. And that gets a standing ovation from these South Carolina fans here. The Gamecocks just will not give up. Look at that pass, Zaya Cook, and there's Taisha Harris, and she'll go to the line. Look at that Gamecock bench. Love the chemistry already to see 
uh, between your senior point guard and your freshman point guard out there together. Now South Carolina will dial up that full court press. Purdue beats it. Look at there. South yeah. Carolina, these freshmen are just pesky. Bounce pass. Harris to Henderson. Harris keeps it alive. Picks up the screen. Kick out. Herbert Harrigan. Oh, Herbert Harrigan with a killer cross runner right there. And the Gamecocks are just having fun. Oh, man. I mean, what can you do? You have all five players right now in South Carolina. Very crafty. Great scores, great defenders, and right now they're playing really well together. I mean, you have Destiny Henderson coming off the bench, giving you another um, really great def perimeter defender. Um, Kiki Herbert Harrigan, you have to, I mean, all her shots today, I believe, came from jump shots, Birch. It is unbelievable how South Carolina, they can almost look like they are carving copies, like they will take the best of each other. And McLaughlin carries another one. She has been a one-man band, really, for Purdue. And as you see Coach Staley standing up on the sideline, keep telling her team to keep going, keep pushing it, keep pushing it. Keep the tempo exactly where it is now. 58-36, South Carolina with the lead. 4-12 remaining here in the third. We've got a fun one here on a Sunday in Columbia. Thursday, we'll have a women's basketball matchup for you right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Number five, South Carolina hosting Duke in a great non-conference matchup in Columbia, SEC versus ACC, 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Here in the capital city today, it's SEC and the Big Ten and the SEC right now. South Carolina having a lot of fun there. Gamecocks kind of like Khadija when a, a, a naval battle group goes to sea, there's a whole bunch of ships protecting the aircraft carrier. There's some cruisers, there's destroyers, there's battleships. Right. Dawn Staley has a bunch of those. She does. She has a bunch of, like I said, she's 10 deep this season. Um, and you see why. Anybody she puts in the game is going to bring energy. It's going to bring a different look um, to that game. And she's doing a great job with just finding her rotations and, and, and throughout all these games. Because I know as a coach, it has to be extremely hard having 10 people and trying to get everybody good minutes. And, you know, everybody's giving you production off the bench. Um, so that's a good thing. Good sign for South Carolina here early. Some people have said, Khadija, that as South Carolina's Henderson is at the line, that you know, it's hard to blend a number one recruiting class freshman with your veteran players, but you know, good players respect good players. Right. McLaughlin dialing up another three. Can she bang it down? No. Kept alive. Odin kicks it out. Trailer now back to McLaughlin. She'll back away. Picks up the screen. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Below 10, now at five. Odin kick out trailer. Wants a three, yes. First three-pointer other than McLaughlin for Purdue. It's a great setup, three-point shot, but you know, the Boilermakers are not afraid of shooting threes in transition, quick threes at all times. They trust in their shot, um, so they're getting a lot of shots up. But they're just a lot not going in here today. Shot contested, and it will go to the Boilermakers. McLaughlin, nice pass, block shot, Carolina. I mean, Carolina got shot blockers everywhere. Oh, there's the Destiny Henderson with a little stop and go. Changing gears is Henderson, and she drops it down. Great, great take there by Destiny Henderson. Took advantage of the uh, defense just standing there in the paint waiting to take a charge. Big three-pointer there for Odin. South Carolina has blocked... Six Boilermaker shots. Purdue, on the other hand, they have blocked six as well. They need Odin to stay on the floor and stay out of foul trouble. They need her production on both ends of the floor, not just the offensive end. She's bringing a lot of energy on both ends of the floor. And there you go over to Leah Boston um, with another two-pointer. She's quietly going to sneak in her she's 10 points get this game. Yes. Yeah. 
She is going to get her. She's got eight right now, three rebounds. She has scored in double figures. Boston has every game this season for South Carolina. She has started every game. This, that's a total of 10. And what's so impressive is four of those double-digit scoring games, she played less than 20 minutes. That's impressive. Her very first game as a collegiate player, she dropped a triple-double. Which has never been done here. Blocks, points, and rebounds. Here's Zaya Cook. The Zaya Cook Circus is in town. Um, I think she went in to halftime, just got it another set. That was an excellent take. Watch this take, lower in the sleek, spin off, finish. It's a really good take there by the freshman. Having an excellent second half. Zaya Cook dialing it up just like they do in basketball camp, South Carolina, 65, Purdue, 42. Saturday, we've got another men's hoop doubleheader for you right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. It's number 12, Auburn hosting Lehigh at Auburn Arena in our first game at 6 Eastern, 5 Central. Then we'll take you to College Station for Oregon State and Texas A&M. Here in Columbia, South Carolina, everybody having a good time watching Zaya Cook and her performance. Taisha Harris. And then Aliyah Boston getting warmed up as well for the Boilermakers. It has been all Carissa McLaughlin, 18 points on seven of 13 shooting for Carissa, four of seven from downtown from behind the three point line. And Dominique Oden playing well, five for 11 from the four is Dominique, 11 points. But she's got three fouls, and that has kept her out of the game for a little bit too long than what Coach Versant wanted. In South Carolina, this engine that Dawn Staley has right now running with these highly touted freshmen blending with the sophomores in Destiny Henderson and then Lily Grissett, who came in and is a highly touted recruiting class in their own right. And then the way they gel with Kiki Herbert Harrigan and Taisha Harris. It is something to behold right now for if you're a Gamecock fan. Look at South Carolina. Amir Hay to Grissett, unable to get the finish, and there's Boston to help out. Fresh shot clock for the Gamecocks. It's a great read there by um, Leticia. Double dribble here. South Carolina whistled for the turnover. Gamecocks 11 now. Me here taking the extra step. South Carolina with four players in double digits. There's another block by the Gamecocks. And it's someone other than Aaliyah Boston or Kiki Herbert Harrigan. They've said they've got other shot blockers on that team. They've had 89 coming in. Ty Harris dialing one up from downtown. And Ty Harris, the Indiana native who had a huge game in Indiana against Purdue a season ago, doing it here this time in her adopted home state of South Carolina, 68-42, Gamecocks with the lead. Her and Zaya Cook are taking turns at just giving excellent play um, here tonight for the Gamecocks. Oh, Boston. Two possessions down. Again um, on the senior. Two possessions down. You have 15 with a shot block. Then you have Aaliyah Boston with another shot block. Four Amazing block shots watch. now for Boston. Henderson fights through it. Great, great, great hustle um, there by Destiny Henderson. First foul whistled on Carissa McLaughlin. Khadijah, as a guard, what do you see in like in Destiny Henderson? 
Um, I see she's a she's an excellent defender. Um, she's able to knock down shots. I remember her freshman year, she wasn't that good of a knockdown three-point shooter. She got in the gym um, and, you know, practiced her shot. Now she's shooting the shot. She can t attack you off the dribble. Um, she's an excellent, excellent person to have on your basketball team. I think Henderson, you know, when she first arrived, it was a confidence issue with her. It was. It was a confidence yeah. issue, not seeing shots go by. But just, you know, same thing, you know, maybe Zaya may be going through. Um, but she's actually having a really good breakout game right here. Um, but, you know, you go through those, you know, freshman um, times. But once you get through that and, and you keep working and you have, you know, Ty Harris beside you, you can get through anything. Well, South Carolina will get through the third. Still holding on to a big lead, 68. 42, fourth quarter when we return to Columbia. The fifth ranked South Carolina Gamecocks taking a 68-42 lead into the fourth. Tonight, the SEC team will recap all the games with highlights, analysis, interviews, and everything else. Six Eastern, five Central. No one covers the SEC like we do. You can also see it streaming live on the ESPN app. Let's take a look at Zaya Cook, Khadijah Sessions. You were a, a former guard, still always a guard, and you always appreciate good guard play. Um, Zaya Cook came out of halftime um, ready to go. Um, she's attacking the basket. She's making great passes. Um, she's getting out in transition and just making a wonderful play. Um, this play right here, though, was probably a, a, the most impressive play coming out of halftime with the pass to the point guard, to Asia Harris. It's a really good play to get the crowd into it. And her, and her teammates. Um, she's doing a really good job um, here in the second half. And you see the bench reaction there for South Carolina. You saw how pumped up Olivia Thompson got. You know, freshman from Lexington, South Carolina. Alisa Westleck, who is not in uniform today because Alyssa has a professor that decided <laughs> they would give a final exam tomorrow. It is exam time here for the students. Saxton, too hard off the glass, but look at Lily Grissett, still battling. Yes, Harris there with her, I want to say her fifth block of the game. Um, I guess it's, you know, South Carolina is the number one shot blocking team in the country, but she's letting them know that she's still down there. She's here. Um, she did an excellent job of protecting the paint. South Carolina averaging 8.9 blocks per game today. They've got nine blocks, so keeping up with the status quo. And South Carolina, the number one blocking, shot blocking team in the country. Victoria Saxton whistled for the foul. Her first. Don Staley pleading her case. At the free throw line, Ariana Harris, she's a good shooter from there, 67%. Preseason all Big Ten player. She and McLaughlin both added to that list. See the numbers for Harris today. Not at the free throw line very often here in Columbia. Just one trip, and she knocked it down. And that is Odin's fourth foul. I think the coach is probably going to keep her in the game um, right here, trusting her um, vet to not foul out this basketball game because she's well needed in this game. Now, this is going to be, a, you know, an area that could be of some concern for the Boilermakers going into Big Ten play and going down the stretch is their bench production. Now, of course, in this game, you're seeing it stacked up against South Carolina and the Gamecocks from top to bottom. Don Staley has put together one of the best lineups in the country as far as numbers go. But Gamecocks the Boilermakers have just have struggled to get some bench production this season. Yes, but right there, they have to box out. South Carolina is doing a really good job at uh, just attacking the boards, being aggressive on the boards. You have Lily Grissett, Victoria Saxton, and Letitia down there just battling 
after, you know, rebound after rebound, and no one's boxing out on Purdue. Janelle Grant with her second foul, so Letitia at the line. Me here, 42% free throw shooter. Good there. And the lead for Carolina now 69-44. As Purdue will send in Lindsey Wilby from Powder Springs, Georgia, the Texas Tech transfer. Back on the floor, the 5'11 junior. Eighteen points today for Carissa McLaughlin. She hit South Carolina up for 25 a season ago, six of 14 from the floor shooting. She's fresh off of a 34-point game against Kent State where she buried six three-pointers. She was perfect from the free throw line, 10 of 10. Destiny Henderson collects her second foul, so back at the free throw line is Ariana Harris. Right now, Ariana Harris is just having her way down low um, there with Victoria Saxon and um, Letitia taking advantage of them. This is the back end. One thing about South Carolina's basketball game, their tempo never changes um, throughout the game. Right now it's the fourth quarter and you still see energy. You still see them pressing up on the guards. You still see them attacking in transition. Henderson pump fake, looking for the screen. Lob pass. Possession will go to South Carolina as the arrow favors the Gamecock. Six seconds of the shot clock. Henderson, jumper from the free throw line. Henderson, Saxton, Brissett, Cook, and I mean here in the five on the floor for Don Staley's Gamecocks, there's a block shot there for Ariana Harris. I want, I want, Birch, I want to say that's like seven. Um, I, I know we haven't got the stat sheet yet, but. It is. I believe that's about six or seven blocks for her this game. Double dribble. Turnover, Purdue. The makers have turned it over 14 times now. And the big difference in this ball game has been the points in the paint. South Carolina just coming up huge there. 40 points for the Gamecocks, 14 for Purdue. Points in the paint. Saxton backing in. Another block by Harris. That would make eight, eight here tonight shots, yes. against the number one shot blocking team in the country. She's making her presence known. But you've got to wonder when Don Staley would have signed that she's had enough of that and put Boston back in because she was really giving Harris fits when Correct. Boston was on the floor. And we have not seen a lot of Kiki Herbert Harrigan either. Shooting this quarter, South Carolina, a paltry 0 for 9. Boilermakers here for 1. Henderson in traffic. Another missed shot for the Gamecocks. 0 for 10 from the floor here in the fourth. But there's a quick turnaround for Carolina, and Cook will go to the line. Trailer coming back on, set to come back on for the Boilermakers. McLaughlin will go out. And Kiki Herbert Harrigan heading over to the scorer's table, set to come back on for South Carolina, and she will. She'll pass the towel off to Victoria Saxton. I think you spoke her up off the bench, Birch. 
Yes. It was about time for Kiki to get reacclimated here. Anderson to Cook. Oh, Cook. Crafty with the dribble. Back to Cook. Overhand pass to Kiki Herbert Harrigan. And Cook is fun to watch. She's very, very fun to watch. And just to say that she's a freshman, she has a lot more stuff to learn, a lot more things to go through. But right now, she's having herself a second half. And if you are a recipient of a, a cook pass. You have to always have your hand on a swivel because she could go anywhere she wants. Right. We've got a stoppage here in Columbia. Timeout on the floor. Carolina leads 71-45, 5.58 remaining here in this ball game. Coming up next for Carolina, they will remain here in Columbia. They will entertain the Duke Blue Devils. That game brought to you on the SEC Network and the ESPN app coming up on Thursday. One thing Dawn Staley has done is she does not shy away from competition. She wants to play some of the best to make her team some of the best. 71 45, 558 remaining here in Columbia. Cocky extending his legs, getting a <laughs> bit of a break. Yeah, South Carolina has been running and gunning here on the Purdue Boilermakers, 71-45. Gamecocks, though, here in the fourth, they have not shot very well, Khadijah, but they have still been <laughs> very, very vigilant on the glass, out-rebounding Purdue here today, 47-24. to The Gamecocks schedule looking like this. Duke here in Columbia on December 19th. Then South Dakota here in the capital city on December 22nd. That could be a very, very interesting game. South Dakota, a very, very good team, receiving some votes to crack into the top 25. And then it is SEC play beginning quickly on January 2nd against the 14th-ranked Wildcats of Kentucky. But that is here in Columbia before going to Alabama. And then you've got Arkansas here in Columbia on January 9th. So, you know, you, you play that tough non-conference schedule, it sets you up for that tough conference schedule. Correct. Um, South Carolina had a pretty tough schedule, um, that, which is good. Um, going into the one of the toughest conferences, um, the SEC, um, getting those freshman uh, girls ready to, you know, see um, what they're going to experience in the SEC. But I don't know if it's a schedule you can put together to prepare your team for the SEC basketball season. SEC is a tough tough, tough conference, and in any given night you can get, uh, you know, beat on any, any given conference, but the SEC in particular is a really tough, tough, tough conference, so they're going to be tested um, night in and night out in the SEC. And one thing about this team that Don Staley has assembled, too, you look at, you know, they're all young, and then you got Herbert Harrigan there, but they always seem to be having fun and enjoying the game of basketball and more importantly enjoying being around each other and i mean that's what it's about Bert. you have to have fun with especially um you know during the season you want to have fun you want to see your team smiling and, and you know dancing and, and doing those things but when it's time to crack down to get serious and, and, and execute your game plan you can do that as well and tonight south carolina um, is having fun and executing their game plan 71 45 Fifth-ranked Gamecocks have led this entire game. Where did that come from? Um, Lily Grissett has been playing excellent tonight. Uh, you go back and watch this game. Um, Lily Grissett has been playing excellent. Uh, of course, that play right there I don't think was a very smart um, defensive play, but she's been playing well on the offensive end. Every time she's touched the ball today, she's put her head down against a guard or a post player and went straight to the basket. Right now, um, She's just having herself a, um, a pretty solid um, night um, offensively off the bench for Don Staley and the Gamecocks. 73-45, Carolina. 
Hitting the deck is Odin. We see Kiki Herbert Harrigan on the back on the floor for Carolina. She is the senior amongst the young guns right now with two freshmen, Cook in or Boston and Zaya Cook. And then Henderson, the sophomore, Grissett, the junior. One thing I think that has been lost amongst this season there is another block shot for Carolina is I think this fun group of girls that have been brought in has really helped Kiki Herbert Harrigan because she's having fun again and her temperament, the way she's approaching the game, it's Boston gets it. It's like when she first arrived, she was that freshman from good old lazy Pembroke Pines, Florida. Right. Last year, you know, she got in trouble sometimes with her temperament. This season has been a complete turnaround. Yeah, um, you know, that's the freshman and senior growth that you that you want to see um, in a player. Um, she definitely had a temper on her getting upset. But, to you know, being around um, this particular team this year um, with the fun this freshman class um, brings and how much they love the game, um, is rubbing off on Kiki and, and I think it made it again. fun and for it her. Made it fun for her again, and you see that. And that's why they're so successful as a team this year. They're number five in the country. Um, you, you know, I won't be surprised to see them a little bit higher. Um, just, just because of how they're playing and how much fun they're having this year. Lindsay will be at the line. Kadisha, is it chicken sandwich time? I think it's chicken sandwich time. If she misses this, this crowd is going to roar. No chicken sandwich, sandwich for you. <laughs> One of those crazy things here in Columbia, if you're just wa watching a Gamecock women's basketball game for the first time, you're wondering what in the world is going on with the chicken sandwich. It's one of those promotions that's been around here. If the opposing team misses two free throws in a row. But it has to be the fourth quarter. Yep. It has to then be the fourth quarter. Everybody here gets, apparently gets a, a I a, guess you show you your get ticket, a ticket stub or you something. Show you your yeah. Yep, you show your ticket stub. You have 48 hours to use it. But the poor chicken does not. <laughs> Baseline, a little short. Boston taps it ahead to Brissett. And we'll give it down to Destiny Henderson. Four, 24 remaining in this game. South Carolina comfortably ahead, 75-46. They've led from start to finish so far. South Carolina makes it so difficult for teams to score in the paint with their shot blocking ability. Even if you give a pump fake, you still have another shot blocker still there to time you up. South Carolina with four players in double digits. It's pretty much been that way the entire season. We've seen a couple of or a few Gamecocks or Gamecock games where everybody on the team has not only played, but they've also scored points in those games. That's one thing about South Carolina. They don't mind sharing the basketball um, and also just, just playing hard at all times. These girls always play hard for 40 minutes. Um, and you have, like I said, you have 10 deep. They do a good job of sharing the ball and attacking and picking and choosing when they should take their shots. So back at the line, Ariana Harris, she's kind of camped out here late in this ball game there. And she has a very good free throw shooter. Very good free throw Spins shooter. That in. They won't get a chicken sandwich off of her no. perch. Cook to Henderson. South Carolina has only hit one three-pointer today. They've only taken six attempts. Olivia Thompson coming on. And this crowd is loving it. Now everybody that is available today has gotten into this ball game. Lisa Weselek, she has an exam tomorrow, a final exam, and it's a university policy as Destiny Henderson sinks the jumper that if you have a final exam a day after a game, then you cannot play. Typically, the university doesn't like the athletic teams to schedule 
games during final exam week. Put, put that foul put Purdue in the bonus, uh, so it sent a Destiny Henderson to the line for two. Henderson, 71% from the line so far this year. There's Wes Elect, Elisa from Charleston, South Carolina, Northwood Academy, averaging two points per game this year. 5'8", junior. Boston draws the double team. Jump ball situation. Possession arrow goes to Purdue. Two shooters out there chasing each other right there, Birch. Henderson all alone, easy lay-in. <laughs> South Carolina, 80 points here now today. Three minutes remaining before closing time and timeout here in the capital city. Carolina leading. 80 to 47. Gamecocks with four players in double digit scoring today so far. Kiki Herbert Harrigan, Zaya Cook, Taisha Harris, and Destiny Henderson. And Aaliyah Boston is just a skosh away from getting her 11th double digit scoring game of the season. I believe she got it, Birch. She is there. She did. She, she, she is, is there with she 10. Got, yep, I think she got it. She's had double-digit scoring every game this season. Well, it is finally here, and you can download the Disney Plus app right now, and you can start streaming the best of not only Disney, but Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, and National Geographic, all ad-free and wherever and whenever you want them. For more information, go to DisneyPlus.com. That's DisneyPlus.com. Could you your ears just kind of pierced up Picked up the interest a little bit when I announced that the Disney app yes. is finally here. You're a, a I love Disney, Disney, and I got the Disney app, and mm -hmm. I'm a fan. I, I'm, I'm a fan of the Disney Plus app. I think you should go and get it. Which uh, which movie is your favorite? Hmm. Or which? What about the series? The old. Um. You know the old I Disney like, Channel. I like Sweet Life, Zach yeah. and Cody. Yeah, I'm 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 I'm, I'm way back. South Carolina rebound. They have really been pounding the boards here today, out rebounding Purdue almost by double. That's it. That is a that's the forward fifth. who has been changed into a guard back into a forward. That's the sixth double-digit scoring off of South Carolina. That's here tonight. She is. Grissett is like Don Staley's multi-tool. There's Alia Boston cutting into the passing lane to come up with the interception. Boston, kick out. Thompson wants a three. Yes! Olivia Thompson buries the three. And once again, a shooter is a shooter, Bert. She can sit the whole game to come in and hit the three-pointer. Every South Carolina player that is available today that has touched the floor has scored points. I think all but one. Who might that be? Maybe Victoria Sexton. You are correct, yes. Khadijah always one step ahead. Second time this season with six players now at double figure score. Last time, and the only time, it was at Clemson. Where the men find themselves today at five o'clock. They have another chance at getting this chicken sandwich, Birch. And it will be again. Who will silence the crowd one more time? One thing they're not, they're not going to do is 
They're gonna, they're, if they're going to go back home in Purdue with the L, they're not going to give South Carolina fans that chicken sandwich. And, you know, I, I think out of all the teams that have been here since that promotion began, I don't think any of the opposing teams know one thing about it. More <laughs> At all. And I know they're like, why are they going so crazy right now? Boston looks for help, finds it in Grissette. Grissette in traffic. Draws the contact. Up next for the Boilermakers, they've got Western Kentucky. South Carolina will have Duke coming to town Thursday here in Columbia. You can watch it on the ESPN app and the SEC network. Dominique Godin, she got in foul trouble early, had to sit for some long minutes. And she will finish out this game on the floor. So coming back on and rebuild, Boston will go to the bench, get a round of applause. And that's when you have Lily Grissett go to the floor. That's why South Carolina is so powerful. Coming from guard, now she gets to play the post. Very dynamic basketball team. Under a minute to go here in Columbia now. South Carolina will take care of business and pick up their 10th win of the season in fun fashion, especially for Her the young ones. Harris just picked up her ninth block of, a, of the season. I mean, of this of game, game, excuse That's, me, of this game. Up. Block shotting machine mainly here in the second half, too. She's a force. I think it's kind of awesome to watch her and Aaliyah Boston yeah. go against each other um, and timing up these block shots and not getting foul calls. I think the refs are doing a really good job at, at understanding that they have two really good shot blocking uh, players and teams. 33 and block shots on the season now for Ariana Harris. I want to say South Carolina's up to about 13 to 14 block shots this game. Thompson launches another three. Rebound Harris for Purdue. South Carolina averages 80 points per game this season and they will keep that here today as they put 85 on the board. And for the second consecutive year, Don Staley will get a win over Purdue. This one easier than the one in Lafayette a season ago. And for Purdue, the lowest point total that the Boilermakers have had this season as they fall to the Gamecocks in Columbia here today, 85 to 51. South Carolina pouring it on and again, getting double digit scoring from multiple players. Coming up next for the Gamecocks, Duke in town this Thursday, seven Eastern on the SEC Network for our entire crew here in Columbia, South Carolina. For my wonderful broadcast partner, Khadija Sessions, I am Birch Antley saying so long from Columbia, South Carolina. We'll talk to you next time.